this is our core disagreement here, which is however you want to, however the balance is going to swing. I, I, the, the, the difference between us here is that I think we read the utility of, of, of anything, but in this case, religious thinking, as evidence of, you, you read it as evidence of something, perhaps, literally true. Inevitability. Depends okay. on what you mean yeah. by literally. Yeah, so, so, and I, I view that as a, a kind of version of either the genetic or naturalistic fallacy, that it's just like, whether, whether that's, it's, it's useful now here for us, it doesn't, doesn't argue that it's the best way of getting those good things. I mean, the, my argument here is that religion gives people bad reasons to be good where good reasons are available. Okay, right? so, and, so... And that's a problem, right? right. And, and, and because good, re, good reasons scale better than bad reasons. And I think we can under... Even if you take the case where religion is clearly useful in a life-saving, utterly benign way, uh, in, in virtually all of those cases, I think I, could, I can get you there by some other way without the, the downside. Or if not, that's just one of those cases where, yes, the fiction was more useful than how do, any possible truth. How do you truth. distinguish a religious system from an a priori perceptual structure? Well, if you can convert to it or away from it in a single conversation, I would say if it doesn't go very deep. Well, you're, you're only, I would say that for much of that, you're only converting at a very superficial level. Well, no. You're converting at the level of conscious apprehension, and most of your cognition is done through unconscious processing. Well, it, so it's superficial. It's just, it's just a fact about us that most of people's religious attachment is born of having it drummed into them by their parents. Right, if I mean, but the truth well, is... Well, no, their parents and their parents' parents and their parents' yes, parents' Yes, exactly, parents but if we did the same thing with Batman and Spider-Man, it would have the same effect, right? Like, if, if you relentlessly told children, right? I mean, I've, I've got, you know, two little girls who are, you know, dressed up like Batgirl right now. They love Batgirl. There's nothing... I don't have to do anything to make them more enthusiastic about superheroes apart from just showing them the pictures of superheroes, right? If I told them, in addition to how, look how fun this is to dress up like Batgirl, uh, in addition, you're, all, you're gonna burn in hell for eternity <laughs> if you lose your emotional attachment to Batgirl, even for a minute, right? Well then, it's gonna be Batgirl for the rest of their lives. <laughs> it, especially if the entire culture is, is doing likewise. And I, you know, again, this is... Well, as, have, as, Eric, uh, as Brett pointed out already, a bad tool is better than no tool at all. And if Batgirl is the closest approximation to a divine figure that you can conjure up, it beats the hell out of none at all. And if Batgirl didn't well, partake of certain archetypal structures, no one would give a damn about Batgirl. Okay, I'm, I'm so gonna, Spider-Man I'm, and Batman I'm gonna spare play, you. A role, play a role in the culture. All right. Because, yes. look, hold, hold it's on. not accidental. It's not accidental that superhero stories have a structure. Well, and to say that, well, Batman and Spider-Man are obvious fictions and we could use them as no, moral no, exemplars, no, no. which you're, we you're do. You're taking, the wrong end. you're taking the wrong end of this. I, I'm, not, I'm not minimizing the power of stories. Right? I'm saying we can understand their power without recourse to believing things we shouldn't believe now in the 21st century. I, I still need an so, answer to the question about what it is that's this transcend, transcendental rational structure without an a priori, uh, an a priori dogma, because well, well, I don't see it. Well, it's not, well, again, this, uh, we, we touched on this a little bit last night in that I freely admitted that in every domain of human inquiry, no matter how, I mean, the, the most hard-headed, so mathematics, logic, physics, at some point, we have to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. At some point, we make a move that is not self-justifying and is not justified by any other move that's more rudimentary. Right. That's so, a statement of faith. That well, thing you, you know, just that's, laid but out. But that's, that's a callow use of the term faith. No, it's not. It's, it's, not. Not the it's same a precise kind of faith. definition of an no, axiomatic my, statement my of faith, faith. My faith that two plus two makes four... That's not faith. Well, no, it is. No, it's my intuition that this is... A, a valid and replicable and generalizable principle, right? You no, that's two not object. faith either. Your statement that that's a useful claim is a statement of faith, but neither of those two were statements of faith. No, it was, statements they're, they're, of they're statements of facts. intuition. No, no, those, these, are, these are intuitions. These are in, because they're, and they're intuitions that can run afoul of other discoveries and other intuitions, as you know, which... Uh, well, if mathematical put, put, so, facts are intuitions, then what are we doing no, with facts? You know, so take, 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 so we, take, we've no, arrived no, 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 at the wait, point wait, wait, where we have to is, decide. This is super important, though. Super okay, important. Okay. okay, we don't lose this. Okay. Yeah. Um, this, 
So we, for, what, 2,000 years, people have been studying geometry and had a very well worked out set of mathematical intuitions with respect to Euclidean space, you know, flat geometry. And then some brilliant guy, you know, Riemann might have been the first, said, well, actually, you can curve space. Yeah, I can bend this triangle, and all, all of a sudden it has more than 180 degrees, right? That's an intuition that people tuned up pretty quickly, but all of humanity was blind to it for the longest time, right? These are, what I mean by intuition is, it's the thing you're using to understand something that you, you are not in a position to analyze. I understand now, that's, that. But that's not faith of the sort which is, listen, I know the Bible was dictated by the creator of the universe. I know Jesus was his son. I know he rose from the dead. I know he'll be coming back. And a thousand if other propositional a, claims if it's on, a statement on, on, of that faith seem highly and implausible. It's valuable, if it's a statement of faith and it's in the value domain, how is it derivable from facts? 